Excellent! So guys, I just came back from an AMD Tech Day event and I have a bunch of exciting news. I have some confirmation of specs and I have the announcement of a couple new products that will be available very soon. We have an eight core 16 thread Ryzen Threadripper 1900X CPU for $549. And we have the Radeon RX Vega 56, a lower end Vega card for $399. Now since we already have a confirmed launch date for the Threadripper stuff on August 10th, CPUs and X399 motherboards will be available for sale. I'm gonna start there and then we'll come back to the Vega news. So if you're not familiar with this stuff at all, Threadripper is the name of the new CPUs that are made for AMD's new high-end desktop platform. They use the new huge socket TR4 and the CPUs are LGA, so the pins are on the motherboard side. And this is AMD's first ever high-end desktop platform, which has a lot of people excited because Intel hasn't had much competition up there in that range, like ever, really. So AMD themselves pointed out some pretty significant price drops with Intel's eight and 10 core consumer CPUs in this generation. And Intel did price their processors this way after AMD had simply announced the existence of Threadripper. So it's already doing good in the marketplace. Now, high-end desktops are made for multitasking and heavily multi-threaded workloads. So AMD's stated goal here is maximum compute performance, the largest possible memory footprint, as much I.O. and storage as they can provide for connections, and the support for multiple GPUs and PCIe lanes. 64 PCIe lanes to be specific, and you get all 64 lanes with all of the Threadripper CPUs. So that's pretty cool. Threadripper motherboards are coming from Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock at least and they sport that huge TR4 socket and the new X399 chipset. We got to check out the Threadripper packaging, which does look pretty cool. And it comes with a couple extras, including an Acetech cooling bracket that you can use with a wide variety of existing Acetech CPU AIO coolers. And it comes with a toolkit with a Torx wrench, since you do need a Torx wrench in order to install a CPU in the TR4 socket, a slightly different means, which I'm sure I will cover very soon. And yes, AMD confirmed that despite the large size of Threadripper CPUs, existing Acetech all-in-one liquid coolers do cover the four dies under the heat spreader so they should work just fine. Threadripper CPUs do have 180 watt TDP, so at launch, expect to see about 20 different compatible liquid coolers available from Arctic, Corsair, EK, NZXT, EVGA, Enermax, Thermaltake, and Cryorig, and we're also expecting there to be at least five air coolers available at launch designed specifically for Threadripper from Arctic, Noctua, and Cooler Master. Now the Threadripper CPUs themselves include three confirmed versions. We have the Threadripper 1950X at $999 at the top end, 16 cores, 32 threads, 3.4 gigahertz base clock, 4 gigahertz boost clock, 64 PCIe lanes, quad channel DDR4, and of course, unlocked for overclocking. Next up, we have the Threadripper 1920X, $799, 12 cores and 24 threads, 3.5 gigahertz base, 4 gigahertz boost, 64 PCIe lanes again, quad channel DDR4 unlocked for overclocking. And finally, the new Threadripper 1900X just announced, $549, eight cores and 16 threads. So just like an 1800X, for example, but on the high-end Threadripper platform, 3.8 gigahertz base clock and four gigahertz boost clock, 64 PCIe lanes again, four channel DDR4, and again, of course, unlocked for overclocking. So some pretty exciting news, I think, to have an entry level Threadripper processor that's uh, gonna be up for grabs for people who wanna get in on that platform, but not necessarily spend 800 bucks or $1,000 on a CPU. Now, just like the mainstream Ryzen 3, 5, and 7 chips, you still get XFR, extended frequency range, but with Threadripper, it can actually boost up to 200 megahertz over the theoretical peak clock. So for these that have 4.0 gigahertz max clocks, they should be actually able to go up to 4.2 gigahertz as long as you have adequate cooling, of course. Now, AMD did set up a couple demos for us and these are provided by AMD, so grain of salt, of course, but they seem to be on the up and up for the most part. First off, they showed Cinebench and they actually showed a rendering equivalent comparing the 1950X to the 7900X and they were like equal. And then they were like, why, why is it equal? It's supposed to be 20% faster. It was because they were running Deus Ex at 4K 60 FPS in the background on the Threadripper system. So they re-ran that test again and then the 1950X won by about 20%, which is pretty nice. Uh, AMD showed several other slides with performance numbers comparing Threadripper models to Skylake X variants. Uh, it does look good from these numbers, but as usual, I will recommend waiting until independent reviews are posted on August 10th. 
Now as for efficiency, according to AMD, the 1950X uses about 3% less power than the 7900X from Intel, resulting in 26% more performance per watt. Availability of these CPUs is coming soon. 16 core and 12 core variants will be available on August 10th, and then that 8 core 1900X will be available at the end of August on the 31st. Pre-orders for those CPUs though are going up tomorrow on July 31st, so if you're really into it, uh, I don't usually recommend pre-orders, but you can get your pre-order in if you're interested. So the upshot of all of this is that we now have a more entry-level Threadripper option for 550 bucks. We have some very exciting performance numbers that the tech community, of course, will be confirming very soon. And overall, we have what's looking like a very strong answer to Intel's lengthy rule atop the high-end desktop market. Let's move on to Vega though. I have pricing, I have some package deal options that might help get these graphics cards into the hands of gamers rather than cryptocurrency miners. And I have lots of pictures and video, of course. Now the full story of Vega as told by AMD goes well beyond gaming. And while I don't have time to go into all that detail today, I will say that the Radeon Technology Group has been designing this GPU to handle all manners of GPU compute tasks, to have native software support for DirectX 12 and Vulkan, and to continue to embrace the flexibility of OpenCL when it comes to development. AMD also continues to point out that FreeSync monitors are significantly less expensive than G-Sync counterparts, so getting a complete setup going for a gaming enthusiast can be much more affordable with this type of solution. Now, if you're thinking AMD should just skip all this Vega workstation stuff and the FreeSync plugs and just tell you if Vega is faster than a GTX 1080 already, well, you wouldn't necessarily be entirely out of line. AMD did show some of their performance numbers for Vega, which was also framed in the context of achieving a good frame rate for FreeSync gameplay, but I don't think they were trying to mislead here. They told us pretty clearly that what they expect the Vega 64 to do is trade blows with the GTX 1080. It might win some, might lose some, but they also said that Vega can provide a better gaming experience due to the better sustained minimum frame frame rates. And if this is confirmed by independent reviewers, it is something that you should take a hard look at. It's not just average frame rates that matter after all in a gaming experience. So Vega isn't going to be a 1080 Ti killer, but AMD has priced it to give the 1080 a run for its money. Here are the confirmed GPUs in the Vega lineup. The Radeon RX Vega 56 is the newly announced version and it will sell for $399. Supports 56 compute units, 3,584 stream processors, a 1,156 MHz base clock, and 1,471 MHz boost. It also has 8 GB of HBM2 memory with 410 GB per second of available bandwidth, 210 watt rated board power, and 10.5 teraflops of FP32 single precision raw compute power. This card has a cooler design that's aesthetically similar to the Radeon Fury or the RX 580 with a black and red design and a plastic shroud. Next is the Radeon RX Vega 64, and the standard model with an air cooler similar to the Vega 56 will go for $499. There's also a special edition of the RX Vega 64 that we had more time with, and that appears to be an aluminum shroud, which will only initially be available th through the Radeon pack deals that I'm gonna be talking about in just a second. The Vega 64 though comes in both air-cooled and liquid-cooled varieties, and some early pricing info leaked through Newegg listings seem to indicate that if these do go up for individual sale, it'll cost you an extra 50 bucks for the special edition and an extra hundred dollars for the liquid cooled special edition so the special edition liquid cooled vega 64 would be possibly six hundred dollars that's not confirmed though but again it looks like when these cards do launch sometime in august only the standard versions at 400 bucks and 500 bucks will be available for sale directly the Vega 64 has 64 compute units, 4,096 stream processors, a 1,247 MHz base clock, and 1,546 MHz boost. It also has 8 gigs of HBM2 memory, but the bandwidth has been increased to 484 gigabytes per second. It has a 295 watt rated board power and 12.66 teraflops of single precision raw compute power. Finally, the liquid-cooled Vega 64 has all those same specs as the air-cooled version, but the base and boost clocks are different, 1406 base, 1677 boost, and 13.7 teraflops of compute performance, and 345 watt board power. So what's the deal with that Radeon pack I've been mentioning? So basically AMD recognizes that gamers are going to be disappointed if all of these Vega cards are just bought up by cryptocurrency miners at launch. So they made a deal that's better for you, the gamer, but probably not quite as appealing to miners. If you buy a Vega GPU as part of a Radeon pack, and they're available as the red pack for $499 with a Vega 56, the black pack for $599 with a Vega 64, or the liquid pack for $699 with a Vega 64 liquid cooled, you will also be able to check out with a $200 discount on a FreeSync monitor, and a $100 discount on a Ryzen CPU and motherboard combo, 
and you also get two free games, a $120 value. Uh, in the US, you're gonna get Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, and Prey, but the games will vary by region, so if you're outside the US, check with your local retailer, I suppose. These combos are gonna be much less appealing to cryptocurrency miners, because they usually want minimal hardware investment, but bear in mind that you must buy all of these products together at the same time. You can't save your discounts on the monitor and the system for later. If you are in the market for a new system and a monitor, this is actually a really nice deal. For $100 more than the base price of the card, you get two free games and 300 bucks in discounts. Of course, if you already have a system and a monitor, it doesn't really do much for you. But at launch, the black and aqua packs will include the Vega 64 limited edition, the cool looking silver one. And once they run out of those, and we haven't been told how many of those are available, so that's a mystery, they will switch and just start sending out the standard version with those packs. Now that is all I have for today as far as information goes, but uh, it was a lot of it, so thanks for sticking with me through it. Of course, you should like the video if you did enjoy it, and uh, you can leave some comments in the comment section if you're excited to finally, finally getting getting over the, the hump of like Vega might actually launch really soon. And of course, Threadripper coming on August 10th. I should be reviewing that, and I might also have a cool video for you in the meantime, maybe a little bit sooner than August 10th. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in that. Thank you so much again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.